How many of you ever had to move a boulder before? Anybody? Well, what did you have to move a boulder for? There was a building or a house. You're building a home. It wasn't that big of a boulder. Yeah. Okay. But uh, can you imagine moving this thing? You got to be an incredible hawk to move that. I want you by the end of this message to picture yourself as this boulder. Now, the only way you're going to get to move a boulder like that would be to put drill some holes in it and put some dynamite. I remember, <laughs> uh, maybe this is where I got my, in my DNA where I have dug out basements. I've dug my basement out of my house. But at our house, we were built on the side of a hill. So there was like, at the end, there's about that much dirt uh, from the floor to the dirt and the ground. And down here, it was you know, a little higher where you, you could actually have a door to walk in. But all that dirt, we had to remove. And what we used is five gallon buckets, fill it up. And of course, there was a lot of times when some boulders would show up. <laughs> and I remember as a kid, getting the sledgehammer out and breaking the boulders. But there's this one boulder in the corner of the house that was unmovable. <laughs> and we tried and tried, and finally my dad decided that he'll just use that as the cornerstone, the foundation, and built around it. But you know, in Hawaii, there's a lot of rain. And in the winter times when there's a lot of rain, um, my brother, you still have to get the wet vacuum out and suck up all the water and bail it out. And basically had to do that all night long. But uh, yeah, I've moved boulders before. And uh, it's not an easy thing. But I think the most important about talking about being unmovable is when your foundation is laid on the rock of ages, you can be unmovable. How many of you know that you can be unmovable? Raise your hand up high. If you can be un unmovable. You can be unmovable. Then why do we allow ourselves to be moved? <laughs> Think about it. What causes us to be movable when we're supposed to be unmovable? <clears throat> you take your eyes off the Lord and then pretty soon the enemy comes in and he moves us. And hopefully he doesn't move us too far. But his purpose is to move you as far as he can from the Lord to the point where you actually reject him. Has he been successful? Maybe not in your life. But I know there's a lot of people who have basically abandoned the Lord because they were movable. They were not steadfast. They did not dig in their heels. Oh, you know that term, right? Huh? How many of you dig in your heels, you know, and your parents tell you to do something, and you just, no. <laughs> man, they kind of drag you. <laughs> I know some, some parents got all of the ear, and then twisted it a little bit, and then, then he was movable, right? He tried to be unmovable. So the thing is, what do we do? How do we get to the point where we are really unmovable, where we don't let anything face us, especially in this world today. It's really easy. The things that are going on every day, and you know, you would think that a small town like Alliance, Nebraska would be a safe place. And then we hear about 
people end up dying for one reason or another, murder, suicide, whatever. And I just got the call, you know, they, that, that um, someone stabbed somebody else. I mean, that type of thing is going on. It seems like in our daily lives, we hear about things here in this small town. Why is that happening? You know, why is a town like Alliance, Nebraska, with all the churches that we have in here, of course, they're not full. Why is this happening? And that is because the Christians, uh, many of the Christians are not firmly grounded and rooted. And if you ever understand plants, if you can grab that plant and yank it out of the ground, then guess what? It's movable. <laughs> but sometimes these trees that, you know, either the birds have dropped their droppings and caused these, or seeds have blown and ended up coming in your yard. If you don't pull them out, those roots go down deep and they're unmovable. In the same way, we as Christians need to be rooted, firmly grounded in God so that nothing can move us. And how do you do that? Daily speaking to him, praying to him, reading his word. Okay. Getting into his word. God has given us everything that we need. Everything? Everything. Everything. Everything that we need to be firmly rooted and grounded in Him so that we shall be unmovable. So let's go to His Word then, right? In 1 Peter 5, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Now, this word humble, how many of you like to be humble? Let's put it this way. How many of you like to be humiliated? We, we don't like that, right? Because we think that if we humble ourselves, then we become weak. You see, that's the strange things about what God is teaching us, is that when we are weak, what's the rest of the go? He, he is strong. Because what happens is when we do not depend on our own strength, and we depend on God's strength, guess what? Is anybody stronger than God? Nope. So, He is the one that's going to lift you up. You see, the thing so many times is we want to exalt ourselves and, and show everybody how good we are. And when we do that, we get humble. Right? But when we humble ourselves and exalt God, guess what? He comes up and He brings us up out of the mire. I was listening to the radio the other day and you know, talking about how the um, sow, after they wash them, what happens? It goes right back to the mud and waters in the mud, right? Huh? The sheep and the bitch. The sheep, yeah. Dumb, right? Sheep are dumb. That's why God needs a sheep, right? Needs a shepherd. You know, the thing is that we must cast all our anxiety. And I was talking to a person, and he says, you know, I'm, I'm always had this anxiety, and I'm afraid of what everybody else thinks. And so we have to take medication. The, the, the doctor prescribes medication so I can control my anxiety. I said, you know what you need to do is learn to trust in God. You don't have to worry about anybody else. See, so many times we want to look good in front of other people. And so when we do it on our own effort to look good in front of other people, guess what? We make fools of ourselves. But when we trust in God that He's going to take care of everything, 
then all of a sudden you don't have anxiety anymore. You don't care about what other people think about you. How many, how many of you think, how many of you care about what other people think about you? Huh? You think about it, right? We all do. But what they think about you cannot determine how you feel inside because if you let people's thinking control your behavior and your outlook on life, then guess what? Yeah, you're going to be anxious. You're going to be worried about what they're thinking about you and when they're going to put you down in front of everybody else so that you look bad. But if you put your faith and trust in God that if you're doing the right thing, you're following His Word, guess what? All things work together for good to those who love Him and to those who are called according to His purpose. So be alert and of sober mind. So if you're drinking booze, doing drugs, whatever, if you're not keeping a sober mind where you can focus on what is important in life, guess what? The enemy, the devil, he's sneaking out like a prowling lion, right? A roaring lion, seeking for someone to eat up. Now, you guys know the, the picture that the, uh, Peter is, is painting here. Here's this lion sneaking up. Just like, you know, you've probably seen some cats going across that bird. And he pounces on that bird and the bird dies. That image right there is the same that is portrayed right here that the devil wants to eat you up. He wants to take you down. He wants to kill you, right? John 10.10, 10, the thief comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus comes to give life. He, gives, he comes to give you the best life possible. Do you believe that? Then why do we seek our fulfillment on other people and other <coughs> things? When Jesus is the only one that can really fulfill you. Resist him. You know, there's too many people that kind of play around with the devil. They think they are stronger than the devil, so they play around with him. That's not resisting him. You know, it's just like, okay, people, Christians have told me, well, what is your horoscope? Well, what is your, what is that? Sign. What is your sign? You know, Capricorn. All these. I said, you know what? I don't even touch there. I don't even go there. Because what, what is that? You know, the Bible, if you're in the Bible, the Bible tells us to do not have anything to do with that stuff. But there's Christians that meddle in witchcraft. How many of you have ever played the Ouija board before? Huh? Or, or been in a, around people that have? You know what Ouija means, right? We, 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 French. It's French words. We is. Yes. Yes. And the other is no. So you got a black ball, and then you know you ask the thing the question, and it, it moves around the board, and and it answers the question for you, right? Yes or no? Dungeons and Dragons. There's all these kind of things that the devil's tools, and, and not only that, is that they have games now, video games. And there's a lot of Christians that are playing video games. And, and I say, well, what kind of game do you? Oh, Minecraft and all this war thing, and kill, 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 shoot these guys down. And no wonder kids today, you know, they, they believe that they can kill somebody, and the next thing that person's alive again. You know, that doesn't happen in your life. When you kill somebody, he dies, that's it. But yet, people are playing around, meddling around these things when the scripture says to resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all 
Andreas, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while. So do you, do you see a promise here? Anybody? We are called to suffer. We're going to suffer. That's a promise, right? After you have suffered for a little while with himself, restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast to him <coughs> be the power for ever <coughs> and ever. Amen. Do you understand what's what he's saying here? Is that the suffering that you go through is necessary for us to become unmovable, to be strong and steadfast, and to persevere through the trials. In Hebrews 10, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence. What, what is confidence? confidence? It's something that you know for sure. We have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain. That is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. And having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. How many of you, when you were little, riding a bike, like to kind of <laughs> swerve around, you know? What happens when you do that? Sometimes you make a mistake and you fall. You know, if you drive that, ride that bike, it's the safest way to drive straight. In the same way, if we play around with life and are wishy-washy in the things that we do, guess what's going to happen? We're going to end up falling. But it says, let us hope unswerving. We don't sway, sway to the left or to the right, but we walk the straight and narrow. We don't play around with life. We hold fast to the truth and do what is right. 100% of the time. Do we mis make mistakes? Do we sin? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you don't have to say every day. You can go a day without sinning. You know that. We should be having our focus on doing what is right all day long. That's our desires to do what God has asked us to do according to His Word. And, and when we have that focus so strong, then we can go through a day without sinning. It's hard. Aren't you glad for 1 John 1, 9? <laughs> Anybody know about that? Quote it. If we confess our sins... He is faithful and righteous and will forgive us of our Thousands. sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. So some of you out there are just decided you want to do something else instead of coming to church somewhere. This is where it says, do not do this. Do not give up meeting together as some in the habit are doing, but encouraging one another. How can you encourage somebody when you're out there on your own? And how can you be encouraged? Or how can you be held accountable for the things that you're doing? You don't know when you're home alone. That reminds me of that movie, Home Alone, right? <laughs> But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. What day is that? 